What is going on everybody? Welcome to a much requested Civ 5 AI only battle, a new Civ 5 AI only battle as well. This is going to be Africa only, plus a little bit of Southern Europe and the Middle East, because that was the map I chose to use, and it'll make it a bit more interesting. Plus there was, there's lots of African modded Civs, but not all of them worked, and obviously there's, there's too many to pick from. And it's kind of, I had to move every single Civ, I just thought I'd point that out as well. This isn't like the TSL world one where they all spawn in the right place and I only have to move the couple that spawn too near to somebody else. I had to move every one of these. It's taken me about two days. Obviously not sat here for two days, but I started <laughs> setting it up two days ago. I finally got it done. There are a lot of in-game editor stuff. But yeah, we're here. We've got all of Africa, the Middle East, and a bit above it, and Southern Europe as well. So there's a few sieves in there as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. But yeah, if you're new here, it would be awesome if you could quickly press that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my new Hoi4, EU4, or Civ 5 content or any other videos that I do put out. That'd be really cool. Be sure to leave a like. And at the end of this video, as always, wait till the end because a lot can happen, even in episode 1. Um, and then you can leave your pick on who you think is going to win. And you might get a shout out at the end if you do get it right, which is it's difficult, but it's done before. I've never got it right, so don't worry if you don't get it right. But um, yeah, let's jump right into this. I'll quickly show you who we've got. So we'll start out of Africa just to make it easier. We've got some of them, are, like I said, I had to move them all. So I had to sort of judge where they should be put. Some of them that's easier than others. Some of them, like some of the African civs aren't actually real countries and stuff like that. And some of them are historic. So it was really hard to pinpoint a place to put them. So sometimes they are moved a little bit. They're not 100% accurate just to make the gameplay a bit more interesting. So like, like Parthia, I just sort of guessed and threw them over here. Just because this was going to be a big open space, if not. But Parthia is back, as people like them. Persia are here. We've got Babylon, Assyria, Armenia, Khazar, the Huns. There's a big gap. But um, the Ottomans are here. Byzantium. I'm at war with everybody, so it doesn't look good. But that's how I had to do it. Greece, Austria, Rome, France, and Spain, and Portugal. All the sort of southern Europeans that I could get in. I don't think there was any. Maybe Venice could have gone in, but there's no city-states. Now, North Africa, we've got Morocco, Carthage, Tunis, and the Vandals. Again, these will spawn really close to each other, or would spawn really close to each other. So I've moved them a little bit just to make it more interesting. We've got the Garabantes here in the massive, empty Sahara Desert. Egypt, Mercuria over here. We've also got Arabia here, who I didn't show off a second ago. And Oman. I keep forgetting Oman are there. They'll, they'll surprise me and be there at some point. Ethiopia. We've got the Masai, I think that's how you say that here. You can't really read their city names, sorry if that annoys you. We've also got Rwanda and Burundi here. They're, again, these countries are tiny, like they probably fit into this space that Burundi is occupying right now in real life, so I've moved them a little bit just to make it a bit more interesting. Kilwa over here on the east coast, Rhodesia and Zimbabwe down here. Again, they, they're the exact same country, just different names, so I've moved Rhodesia north a little bit, or I think Zimbabwe's moved south actually. And the Zulu are down here at the bottom. Then there's there's a lot of space in this map. This map is huge. So there's going to be some big, big sieves all over the place. We've got the Congo all on their own out here. They've got a lot of... Look, we can not see sieves for miles from them. But obviously the space will fill up pretty quickly. And over here in um, sub-Saharan, southwestern Africa, we've got a few more sieves. Quite a clustered area of the map. We've got Nigeria, Benin, the Ashanti. And then we've got Mali and the Songhai too. And I believe that is everybody. So... Be sure to wait till the end to leave your pit. There's some space for some colonization, namely Madagascar. There's a couple of islands, but there's not too much. But yeah, be sure to leave your pick. It'll be the usual way of winning. I think this might be the slowest battle, like when it gets towards the end, so we'll see what happens there. But let, let's get right into it. Let's go over here quickly. Just do this to make it quick. I don't know why I'm spectating as Siam. <coughs> they were just the first, they were at like the top of the list of people to pick, so I picked them, and they weren't in Africa. So it obviously made things easy. But here we go, we're going to see, I believe, let me just go through the settings while this is flying through. We're on Emperor difficulty, standard pace, aggressive and expansive mod is on, no city raising, no barbarians, complete kills has to be on, no ancient ruins, quick combat, quick movement to speed things up. Time science, time victories on? Is it, oh. We're not going to make it to turn 500 anyway, at least in video form anyway, so it doesn't matter. Science, domination, cultural, diplomatic are all on. Science victory is usually the one. I wouldn't expect any of the other ones. Standard, Emperor, yep, there you go. You can see everything there. We do have the Info Addict. As usual, we can see what's going on. So yeah, it should be a good time. This map, like I said, is huge. We're on Emperor, so they don't start with a second settler or anything. So it'll be a while till we see second settlers coming out. But one of the big things I've noted is that um, there's quite a few areas 
there's like little clusters of sieves in different parts of the map and then there's big spaces in between them so i feel like we're going to see a strong sieve come out of like each cluster and then they go on to spread and fill up most of the space i think that's what's going to happen i don't know so it's going to be quite easy for the europeans i feel to just look kind of look normal if that makes sense like we'll probably see france take all this space spain take this stuff portugal probably get trapped in the corner rome take most of italy austria will have a good game probably although byzantium and greece will obviously be here the huns again they're going to be able to do it the huns are probably going to be quite big but this desert isn't too useful and even if they are quite big then kind of up in the corner of the map well away from the action and where all the resources are in africa you see the Kazara here to sort of slow them down a bit potentially armenia's in the mountains parthia's here we've obviously got persia can they can fill all this space babylon the middle east is again it's very open but there's a lot of desert and the same goes for the sahara it's a lot there is resources in there but po high population is not really going to be possible the ottomans are here as well See, we've got Egypt and everybody. The Huns have denounced Parthia. That didn't take too long. I'm trying to spot anyone settling a second city. I don't see it yet after 14 turns. Sorry about all this grey blocks, but I think we're just going to have to live with it because it is such a big map. So it's going to be quite slow. So yeah, this this is exciting. This has been requested a lot. Africa only. A lot of work's gone into it, so I hope you enjoy it. A lot of work. A few hours of work went into it, getting everything set up quick chance for me i guess to plug the discord if you join the discord server you'll get to like suggest mods and i i do listen when you comment like mods and stuff and what to do but obviously it just gets lost as more comments come in and also i can't do everything that's suggested so yeah in the discord there's also just like sneak peeks or i won't call them sneak peeks but you do get to know in advance what's going on and sort of more updates about what is coming in the future but yeah here we go. No one seems to have grabbed that second city just yet. First Pantheon, Ethiopia, Goddess of Protection. There we go. Starting off just like a normal game. What more could we want than just a nice normal start to the game than that? Ethiopia doing the same thing that they always do. There's no random personalities on, so we're probably going to see an aggressive Zulu. And yep, they've already got their settler up. Nigeria with Sacred Path. That is their choice of Pantheon for this game. I'm just going to sort of stay looking here and just look at the mini-map for a little while. We should see if anyone settles a second city that way. That'll probably be easier. But yeah, let me know. So I've showed you everyone in the game. Let me know at the end of this video. Do wait till the end on who you want to win. Be sure to leave a like again. I'm just really plugging everything right now as we wait. It's going to take, it's going to take a little bit of time for the action to get going. Wow. Okay, so... Enhanced, the, I can't remember what the mod's called, I've used it before, but the faster border growth is on. Um, so if you have culture and stuff like that, 50 happiness, that is... Ah, okay, so they've all got very high happiness. Ah, this is, I feel bad now, I might have to change this, but um, basically when I move them, I have to explore the whole map, move the units, and then unexplore the whole map for every sieve, it takes ages. Um... But the thing is, that means they see all the wonders, so they get a ton of happiness, and it's as if they all found it first, I think. So, the only sieve that actually spawned kind of close and was okay, because I had to put Rhodesia there, was Zimbabwe. If they start having problems, I'll, I'll go and fix it and give them that same ability too, after episode 2. Because that's when I'll stop this recording session, so yeah. If that becomes a problem, I will do it, but that's why it's also so high. It's not the biggest thing anyway. It, it just it's kind of a downside of how we have to do it france have got a settler up so have rome but i don't see anyone who's actually settled just yet with that second settler oh austria heading east that's interesting see austria i know a lot of people like austria they get requested a lot so um it's good to have finally got them in a game but yeah i just tried to fit in the europeans from the base game that actually fit in i didn't want to put in too many mods although the Khazar was just there because i thought the huns had a bit too much space and again, Armenia was similar. There we go, Babylon grabbing a nice bit of land in those floodplains. I imagine that would be a big city. Kilwa have gone for the God King Pantheon. So there you go. There we go. First, second city settled. Probably. We'll go with probably. It does look like it. Babylon, down these rivers. That is going to be a lot of food. All that wheat, floodplains. These are going to be some huge cities. Could be good for them. In the region, we've got the Ottomans with settlers. It's going to be crazy. There's going to be so many cities because 
this is a huge map. Like that, you could probably fit like eight cities into Anatolia, let alone into Africa, which is huge. Armenia with one with nature. I would like to see more of the African civs grabbing those pantheons because that's obviously because I don't want to Europe. The Europeans are here to make it more interesting, but I don't want to see them win necessarily. So um, they're just here to make it interesting. There we go. France settling down here and probably limiting their chances to access the Mediterranean, which could be an interesting landscape across this game. It's bigger than normal. Can get across. I wonder will we see any Europeans though actually going over and conquering into Africa? I don't think so. There's so much space for the Africans. Like these North Africans can just plunge down. And I think we're going to get a very sort of a map that kind of looks like a real Africa. We're going to have big countries in the south, lots of space, all the way up to sort of the Sahara. The west is going to be a bit more cramped. And then the North African countries, again, will be quite big. Also, we're going to probably see some random settling from some of the AI settling quite far away because there is so much space. See already Morocco there moving into the desert. Carthage already moving quite a way away from their capital. Songhai going with Sun God. That's banana wheat resource. Wheat's pretty good. They've got a lot of wheat here. Also, they're just up river from Mali, who've just grabbed their second city, and they're moving west. Ashanti are going to need to act pretty quickly compared to most of them. Look at Benin, by the way. Six population out here in the rainforest. That's pretty good. Um, or jungle. There's so much jungle out here. Look, the science that someone like the Congo could get from here is going to be huge. Hugely, hugely interesting. So we're about to hit... Turn. I think we'll get to turn 40, episode 1, and I'm going to quickly show you all the civs again so that you can make your judgement a little bit easier. We have the Zulu, two cities already, just down here in the south. They're nowhere near anybody else, but obviously it will fill up quite quickly. I'm sure it will. It starts looking huge. There we go, second city from the Masai, Serengit, up into sort of Somalia and the Horn of Africa. Again, this will be another interesting battlefield, potentially. Um, the... The Red Sea, I hope that's right. <laughs> yeah, not so much the Persian Gulf, it's locked off. I doubt we'll see anyone actually settle over here. Oman, just chilling on their own. I don't think they've met anybody yet. So that would explain, except Persia. So they're maybe just staying at, staying over here, doing their own thing. Which isn't the end of the world. They can do that if they want. I mean, they're in a, they're in a pretty safe spot. They're tucked in the corner. We already have Zimbabwe, forward settling Rhodesia. I didn't take too long. No Uganda, I'm afraid. No Knuckles memes, I'm sorry. They did not know the way to make a mod for that. But um, Swahili, I, I call them, I, I will probably say it a lot and call them Swahili, but it is Kilwa, is the name of the mod. For some reason it's called a Swahili settler, I guess like the language and stuff. So yeah, that, that that's Kilwa. Okay, so we have Burundi moving south, and already, yeah, and even though we said Congo are far away, they're pretty close. <laughs> who's this? That's Rwanda, who's these guys, just above Burundi. It's interesting. Already a third settler for Burundi. We have Ethiopia already heading very far away. As I said, we're not going to see the smartest settling all the time. For these AIs, Egypt heading north. Mercuria has not started settling just yet. We've got a second city for Persia heading north. Parthia haven't gone yet. Kazara heading south. Attila's just headed sort of a little bit to the northeast. He's not really gone in Austria already going for the west coast of the Black Sea. They have, oh, and look at Rome, already coming around here towards Greece and Austria. Austria may be eyeing that up if Rome don't build an army to defend it. Spain and Portugal yet to build any settlers. Carthage with a coastal, did that settler go home? Yeah, I think it was the same settler, just came back. But let's quickly go over everybody. So in Europe, we've got Portugal, Spain, France. This is how they're obviously looking. Just make your pick off this sort of look around here. We've got Rome, who obviously do have another settler. Just here, Austria, Greece, Byzantium, bit of a slow start. They do have a caravan, which is, I think, a first. It's the first caravan. Ottomans are here. We've got Syria, slow starters, but they have a big army. Armenia, Khazar, Huns, Parthia, Persia, Babylon. Arabia's here. Them and Oman can probably live in isolation for a bit longer than most people. Egypt and Mercuria here. Now, obviously, over North Africa, we've got the Garamantes. Probably going to have a slow start until they can get some farms up because they're in the Sahara. But that might be a benefit because um, no one else might be attracted to that land. You've got Vandals who have now got a settler. Tunis have now got a settler too. Carthage here. Morocco going round the coast. We've got Mali here already up to two cities. Ashanti have now got a settler. Benin haven't got a settler just yet. Nigeria, who do have a settler now. 
Songhai yet to settle any really do anything. They're just focusing on growth by the look of it, which is fair enough. They got a ton of wheat. Down here we got the Congo, who in isolation I would be tempted to pick the Congo. Um, the Zulu as well, obviously a usual favourite down here in the South South Africa. Got Rhodesia with their second city. They push Zimbabwe just as Zimbabwe settled near them. Got Kilwa heading south with the city of Zanzibar. And they might have an advantage of being one of the first onto Madagascar as well. We've got Burundi here. We've got Rwanda, who have now got a settler. They haven't settled just yet. Ethiopia, who are heading far away with a settler. And the Maasai. And I believe that is everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed episode one. If you have, once again, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to leave a comment with who you think is going to win. I am going to go with a mod that I just think has a really cool card. I'm going to go with the Maasai. They're a new mod that someone suggested in the Discord. I, I, I think there was, I'm pretty sure they were suggested in the Discord. If not, I found them by complete accident. But I'm pretty sure they were suggested in the Discord. They are really cool colours, even though you can't read their name, which sucks. So yeah, let's go with them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.